Until now, electric cars were a distant dream in India. But earlier this year, we got our very first usable electric car. And well, now we have the second one, MG's ZS EV. Well, technically, we don't have it just yet, for its market launch is due early next year, but bookings are now open. So let's take a closer look at this electric MG ZS. The electric MG ZS looks like a fairly conventional vehicle from the outside as it shares its body shell with the standard ZS with an internal combustion engine. In essence, this is a crossover with a decent amount of ground clearance but a fairly sleek body for an SUV otherwise. Some of the design detail highlights include the headlight LEDs around the projector lamp which MG says takes inspiration from the London Eye. The alloy wheel design takes inspiration from windmill fan designs and like the headlights, MG goes big on inspiration for the taillight LEDs by saying that they take inspiration from the Ursa Major no less. Otherwise, the car gets a traditional front grille and if you look closer down the back, you will of course notice the lack of a taillight. Now coming into the interiors, there's a lot of soft touch plastics but there's some hard plastics as well uh, such as on the door pads but there's some nice touches as well uh, such as the air vents on the side the center console on the other hand where the infotainment screen is that could have been of a higher quality so is the same with the touch screen infotainment system now of course this touch screen comes with a host of functions it shows you how much charge the car has how much driving range you have uh, there's satellite navigation, there's an inbuilt SIM, this is a connected car and you have your MG voice assistant as well and like a connected car you get your emergency call buttons as well you also get a preloaded Ghana app for playing music, streaming online Moving on, uh, there are minimalistic controls in terms of switch gear for the HVAC unit Coming to the business end, well uh, you get two traditional dials in your instrument cluster, I like that this is also because the ZS EV is based on the traditional ZS which is powered by an internal combustion engine. So you get your speedometer and you get your driver information display. But instead of your rev counter on the right side, you get this uh, battery consumption meter. And it works in a very traditional manner such as a rev counter because the needle rises as you throttle it harder and shows you how much percentage battery you're using. That aside, you have traditional gauges to display your battery level and your battery volts. Coming down to the center console, you get a traditional gear knob. Alongside the gear knob, you have your drive mode buttons. That's for eco, normal and sport. You get your kinetic energy recovery system button. So you have three levels of regenerative braking. And then you have your battery switch, which every time you pull, uh, it displays the driving range on your driver information display screen. So in that sense, the ZS Electric feels like a very conventional car to drive because uh, the controls are very conventional. In terms of other features, well, you get this huge dual panel sunroof, uh, which covers 90% length of the roof. So that inherently gives the car a very large glass house, which is a great thing. Coming to the comfort inside the cabin, you do get some really well padded seats, but uh, they could have offered better support for your upper back. Speaking about more convenience features, well, you get an electrically adjustable driver's seat, you get automatic headlamps, and you get a tilt adjustable steering wheel, but it does not adjust for reach. But when it comes to the overall look and appeal of this cabin, it's a very standard one, and uh, you won't be taken aback by entering an electric car in this one at least. But now it's time to get into the rear seat of the car and see just how comfortable that is. Now back here in the rear seat, that dual panel sunroof really plays a great role in making you feel very airy inside the cabin. Uh, in terms of space, there is a decent amount of it and you get a fair amount of legroom as well. Now MG has pointed out that you get an absolutely flat floor here, so there is no center tunnel. That is of course helpful, but what you have to remember in these electric cars is that despite having a flat floor, because there's a battery pack underneath sandwiched between this floor and the bottom of the car, the floor of the car tends to be quite high. 
which is why you do not get enough under thigh support. Also, you have to remember that this is at the end of the day a fairly compact vehicle, which is also why you don't get an ample amount of under thigh support. Had this been a bigger car, a bigger SUV, you could have had more legroom in that sense. But as of now where I am sitting, because of the high floor, uh, I do not have enough under thigh support. In fact, this feels very similar to the rear seat of the Hyundai Kona. I would have to say that this is a comfortable place for urban journeys. Another thing I have to point out is that while the seat itself is well padded, you do not get a center armrest. So in that sense, you know, to rest your left arm on longer journeys would have been more comfortable. But hey, this works as a five-seater perfectly well. Now this drive is more of an experiential drive, it's a very short drive, more so we're just overcome by weather conditions today, it's very foggy, uh, so in order to stay safe I'm driving very carefully and a little bit slowly. So on that sense I can't bring you a full comprehensive review of the car today, but what I will tell you is that this 44.5 kilowatt hour battery pack in the MG ZS EV is fairly responsive especially in sport mode you can feel that extra power you know i'm talking in context to the kona now there is a larger battery pack and you can feel that extra power it is rated at 140 bhp and torque is rated at 352 newton meters thereabouts so the zs ev is fairly responsive uh, to drive in sport mode of course it feels very sprightly and if you really throttle it hard uh, you'll generate some wheel spin and then set off even as you go along so even as you're going along it'll generate some wheel slip and then we get going and otherwise in normal mode uh, it's dialed down a little bit acceleration uh, but it's still very responsive and it is ideal for driving on city roads as well as on highways now eco mode uh, dampens throttle response in the interest of furthering your driving range so in that sense response is muffled but it isn't too bad because in the city that's more than enough power that you need again uh, throttle response at slower speeds is instantaneous and it really helps you make those quick overtaking maneuvers even in urban city conditions now you get a three-stage brake energy regeneration system and uh, you know of course you can feel the intensity of it increase as you go higher up to level three but uh, in respect to the Hyundai Kona again uh, it feels a little muffled because the brake energy regeneration in that is really sharp and since we've now come to a bump let me tell you about the ride comfort in this car well uh, the ride comfort is okay but you know when you are cruising at about 50 or 60 kilometers an hour and you come across wavy roads or sharp bumps uh, you will tend to get jostled about a little bit so the ride comfort is a little bit bouncy but otherwise as you drive along the car feels very pliant and it is quite sure-footed but like an EV, when it comes to handling, you can feel the weight of this car. So as you approach those highway bends, you will feel the weight of the car leaning to one side as you take a corner. Now from behind the wheel, you can always tell that this is an electric car because that motor whine is present. So there is a fair amount of electric motor noise inside the cabin. Now as an electric car, this is fairly smooth to drive. But you know, there is some sense of what is happening. You can get some sort of uh, feel from this car, which is nice because uh, it, it feels like a more traditional car to drive in that sense, the way you can hear the motor whine and the way you can feel this car running. But I'm afraid that's just about what I can tell you today because we are driving under very limited conditions, weather conditions with the fog and everything. Plus we have a very short window to shoot and drive. But rest assured when this car is launched, we will definitely bring you a more comprehensive review. Now sitting here from the driver's seat, uh, the visibility out of the cabin is great. The windscreen is wide and the A-pillars don't block your vision too much. The driving position itself is nice. I would have liked a reach adjustable steering wheel. So on the whole, because of your seating position of your visibility out of the cabin, this is going to be a very easy car to drive in the city. 
So the ZS Electric definitely has its benefits as an electric car. In fact, it's a very nice car to drive in the city, but I'm afraid you're gonna to have to wait for a more comprehensive review once we get the car for a longer time and we can conduct our full range of tests. But in the brief time that we've spent in the car, I think I can safely say that it feels like a very conventional car to drive. And that is in fact a good thing because you're very aware of your environment, the way the car is working, and you're very at ease with the controls even if you've just got in the car for the first time. So in that sense, the ZS Electric is a great proposition for anybody entering into the electric car space.